Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today I just have something really quick to show you guys. Uh, some of those post credit scenes that we talked about for Absolute Carnage has started to come out. Uh, actually last week or two weeks ago, we got Symbiote Spider-Man number three and Venom number 15. And these are not going to be reviews of those books. Those will be coming up at some point down the road. Uh, you know, I'm just a little behind on everything right now. But trust me, I'll catch up and we'll get back to uh, you know all of our reviews and, and War of the Realms and we'll wrap all that stuff up very, very soon. I think the last issue is coming out like in a week or two, so that'll help us and we'll go through and we'll maybe play more Marvel vs. Capcom and we'll, you know, talk about the rest of War of the Realms and what Venom's been up to. And then maybe we'll do a separate episode just focusing on the three issues that Cullen Bunn wrote for Venom War of the Realms. So we'll get into that. We'll talk about the, that issue. We'll also talk about Symbiote Spider-Man. Once it's done, I'll do an episode where, you know, talking about all five issues. So uh, that'll be, you know, in the next like month or two, we'll, we'll you know, get the ending of it. But uh, there's a post credit scene here. And then this past week was Deadpool number 14. So I figured, you know what, I'm going to give it three you know, books. These two I was already collecting, so I was like, that's really easy for me. But Deadpool I'm not currently collecting, but it does tie into War of the Realms. So I was like, all right, cool. I could get a War of the Realms tie-in and read about that, and it was pretty fun, actually. Uh, but I, you know, also I was like, I'll get the post credit scene. And if I don't like any of the post credit scenes, then chances are I won't pick up the rest. Um, you know, so I think for me as like, for, you know, covering this channel, as long as I let you guys know it exists, I feel like I've kind of done my job. I feel like I don't have to review every single little thing, uh, especially if I'm not enjoying them. And in this case, I would say I'm not really enjoying them. Uh, surprise, surprise. Uh, they're just, uh, they, they're not a lot to them, to be honest with you. Uh, there one writer is writing them, uh, Clay McLeod Chapman. And uh, I think Francesco Mobila is doing the artwork, if not on all of them, at least on a couple of them. Uh, but the art is fine. I mean, you know, the first one in Venom number 15, we get this one here. And it was funny because I had some people like tweet me and say, hey, I got Venom 15, uh, like you said in your episode, and I didn't see any post credit scenes. And I'm like, yeah, it's after the book ends, you know, the final page. Uh, then you go to the very final page right before the final ad, because uh, that's the post credits, right? That's the last possible page it could be on other than the cover. Uh, so yeah, check that out. Just make sure you, you know, and I know a lot of people are like, I didn't notice it was part of Absolute Carnage because nothing here really indicates anything. It's just like a random scene. It doesn't say Absolute Carnage tie-in, nothing like that. So I get it. I understand why some people were kind of confused um, about this, but that's where they are. They're located and they all just, I don't know, they just change perspective, each one. This one is just about a guy who's like looking underground, I think maybe underneath San Francisco, like maybe, or maybe under New York, I can't remember, because um, he says Grand Street, Southeast uh, Grand Tunnel under Grand Street. So um, he's under there, there's rats running around, and then all of a sudden this uh, maybe homeless person or someone comes running through going, run, run, everyone get out of here, oh my God, oh my God. And then, you know, the rats come up and their eyes are glowing, like, you know, null infected rats or something and then they start eating away at the guy who was like in the hazmat suit so uh but he's he's kind of down there going hey guys you know talking to people up above he's like there's something down here uh looks like there's uh you know uh something growing on the walls so that's pretty much all that really happens there uh in the symbiote spider-man one this one i think is eddie brock and i think it takes place in the past um it starts off and the dialogue is uh, it's two guys on a bus and uh, the one guy is saying like, oh, my dad, he was always angry. He, you know, he uh, called me a disappointment, a waste, all this other stuff. And then you have Eddie Brock, not, I think Eddie Brock, not really paying attention, just kind of listening and then staring out into the window. And then he goes, uh, you know what, kid, it's okay. We're all looking to start over, start a fresh, you know, fresh start. That's why we're coming to New York. And then boom, Eddie Brock steps off the bus. You see the Baxter building. And that's when Spider-Man shows up with the black costume uh, swinging overhead. And he goes, I'm just looking for something amazing that's what uh, eddie brock here says and i'm pretty sure it's eddie brock don't quote me on that i mean i could be wrong could be another character that we'll find out who it is later uh but i i think it's eddie brock it makes sense that's eddie brock and also the dialogue makes a little sense because i'm kind of wondering remember donny cates is retconning everything saying that you know eddie brock's memories are all a jumble so what this guy's saying about having an abusive father and all these other things and how his dad called him a disappointment that's kind of something that happened to eddie so maybe that's you know where eddie gets that from after the suit maybe that it, it remembers this conversation is like all right i'm gonna warp eddie's mind and make him think all these bad things are happening even though it looks like his dad really is like an a-hole um so i don't know i mean or maybe it's just there to show that you know eddie brock is listening to someone who has the same problems he does but he's already passed it he's already like you know what i don't care i'm here i'm moving on and i hope you will too maybe that's the advice he's given here nothing's really clear because everything's done really quickly in one quick page um francisco mobila did the artwork on this one too and it's fantastic so i like i like francisco's artwork i definitely do um francisco does not do the art though on this one i think alberto jimenez albuquerque does the art on the deadpool one and deadpool he's uh hanging out in fair woods in you know uh, in front of his tv and there's like some report on tv about a family of four missing 
and then it caused him to have this nightmare where the four symbiotes that he once bonded with in Deadpool vs. Carnage, which we're going to talk about, you know, down the line on the next Carnage week. I'm th I think either the next one or the one after, it'll be a part of that. Um, and it, so it's him rebonding with them in a nightmare. And then he wakes up and he's like, oh, I had too many burritos, you know, before bedtime. Um, and I wonder what's going on. And then the news report kicks in about a family of four missing. So it looks like, you know, this one at least had symbiotes in it and Deadpool in it as, as far as far as the post credit scene. So um, that's something, I guess. <laughs> but again, these are, there's nothing to these. Like I would say, if you're trying to read Absolute Carnage, you're probably not going to get too illuminated on anything major in any of these post credit scenes. I could be wrong. Maybe the next wave, because there's two more issues this month. I think Fantastic Four, number 11, and Amazing Spider-Man, number 24. I think those come out this month and they'll, or the first week of July, maybe, and they have a post credit scene in them. And then the second round of post credit scenes kick in as well. So there's going to be 10 post credit scenes total if you want to know all the books that they're in uh, definitely go check out my episode a couple episodes ago where i talked about all the post credit scenes uh, but that's all i really want to bring your attention i just want to talk about these and just say like for me it's not enough to go buy books that you're not buying that's kind of the goal of these is hey go check out you know deadpool luckily i'm buying war of the realms so when i saw it was a tie-in i was like okay i'm not out any money then because at least it'll tie in to war of the realms which i'm really liking uh symbiote spider-man i'm also collecting so that was nothing big there and then venom this is the last monthly issue of venom that i'm I'm probably going to get i mean i don't know i'll probably get the absolute carnage stuff just to cover it for you guys unless i'm not enjoying it and then i'll probably just buy the absolute carnage four issue miniseries and maybe one or two of the tie-ins and maybe just skip the venom issues from now on uh but uh but yeah either way i mean these are just my thoughts i just wanted to bring them to your attention uh and again refresh your memory if you haven't got any of these books because they're post credit scenes um, you know, check them out if you want to yourself. I would say there's nothing major here, but if you're a collector out there and you're, you collect everything Venom and you just have to have every single thing that ties into Absolute Carnage, you know, you're going to want to pick up these 10 books for sure. And then to cap this episode off, I actually went down to a House of Secrets this morning and I was like, you know what? I need another box. I need another short box and, uh, you know, preferably something with like Venom or, you know, Spider-Man on it or something like that. And lo and behold, I went down there and they actually had a Venom box right here uh, featuring artwork by Mark Bagley. And this is from Venom Lethal Protector number two that came out back in the mid 90s. Uh, it says Venom on top there. And you just have the same image on all the sides. It's made by NECA. I'm so glad that they do these. Uh, the NECA boxes, they are really awesome. Uh, the, the DC ones they did with Starro and stuff, it's like they do phenomenal work. The, I think I have one that has uh, the Immortal Hulk on it um, as well. So this way I can reorganize some books today. I'm not really feeling too, too well. Um, and this is probably all the energy I'm going to show today and all the excitement I'm going to show today because after this, I need to like take some ibuprofen and just kind of crash and just do something quiet, maybe put on some music at a really light level and then organize some comic books. So that's what I'm going to do. But I just want to bring that to your attention too. That box is out there. It's available, uh, you know, your local comic store. If they don't already have it, you might want to ask them how they have to order it because I think they have to order in bundles. So that's why a lot of comic shops don't order these because not a lot of people buy them. Uh, they order, I think they're in bundles of five or 10. So that means a comic shop has to order a bundle of five or 10, hoping that all of them sell and that they're not just stacking them up um, and taking up space. So luckily House Secrets does order these in, in Burbank. And that's why I went by there. I was like, you know what, They'll, whatever they have, I'll pick up a box today. And I'm so glad I went in and saw this Venom box. So this is available, it's out there. Talk to your local comic store about ordering one for yourself or visit the NECA website and see how you can order a bundle yourself. If you just want like a bunch of Venom boxes, you can maybe order a box of five or a bundle of five and then just you know organize all your comics through, uh, through the same box. I, I like do, doing different boxes, obviously, because uh, I don't. I want. I want to be like, all right, that. Venom, I have my Venom books in my Venom box and my, my Avengers and Hulk books in my Hulk box. You know, I like to organize things that way. But if you're out there and you're just like a total nutcase and you're like, hey, I'm all Venom everywhere. You know, I mean, see, nutcase right here. Um, yeah, I'm calling myself out. <laughs> if, you're, if you're like, I, I can have five of these boxes, I don't care. And, you know, I'll organize them however I want. Then I would say go pick these up. They're awesome. And uh, they're definitely worth the 12 bucks because they're made really, really sturdy. And as far as the, them holding up, I've had the first NECA boxes that came out, I think were like X-Men ones. And, uh, and I still have those. They're still holding up sturdy. I haven't spilled something on one of them uh, once. And luckily I got to it really quick to dry it off, but it doesn't like you know, corrode and stuff the way the, you know, the white boxes did. So uh, definitely worth the price, I say. Ah, so close to the end. And then I screwed everything up and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just losing it, guys. So I'm so sorry uh, for the jump cut there. I'm just not feeling too well. So if you have any comments that you want to make about this episode down below in the comment section, please do. We'll continue our conversation down there. I definitely want to hear your thoughts. If you read any of these post credit scenes, I'd love to hear your thoughts down there. And we'll continue talking down in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.